We must connect what we believe, what we confess our creed to our actions. There must not be a contradiction between our worship of God on Sunday morning and how we live our life every day. The book of James was written in the context of encouraging the believers, provide practical instructions to the Christian community that was in the diaspora. They were in Palestine. They were far away from their land. This group of believers began to experience hardship and difficult time. So James is writing to them to try to encourage them. You who are living outside of Palestine, I understand you are in a new culture, in a new environment. These were Jewish Christians that he's trying to encourage them and say, come on, come on. Do not get discouraged. Because you see, sometimes when we get discouraged, we don't practice our faith anymore. You know, when we go to trials and tribulation and temptation and hard time, sometimes we forget the word of God. But do not just be hearer of the word, but be doers of the word of God. Because you see, James is challenging them and encouraging them in terms of providing practical advice on living out their faith. How we need to live out our faith in our everyday experience, living out our faith, my brothers and my sisters. When we live out our faith, it becomes practical Christianity. Amen. Practical in terms of reality because when we practice the word of God, we have an opportunity to shine. If the Christian community will let the love of God in their lives, to become a reality in our everyday experience, Christian will influence the world. You know, when the light shines, there is a reality that takes place, whether you like it or not. When the light shines, darkness disappears. When there is love, hate will disappear. When Christian begins to practice the word of God, we become a positive influence by being doers of the word of God. Christian can positively impact those around them. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, our act of kindness, of compassion, when we show these things, our action of love, our understanding and grace in the world, we are testifying about the transformative power of God in our lives. When we are doers of the word of God. We experience personal transformation. When we are doers of the word of God, we embrace the word of God and we allow the word of God to change our lives in terms of our character and behavior. You know, many times I'm more concerned about us Christians, are we act because how we act is a living testimony of whether we know the Lord or if we do not know the Lord. Be doers of the word of God. James encouraged the believers and say, do not just be listeners of the word because if you are just listeners, you are deceiving yourself. When we just hear the word and we do not do the word, when we do not practice the word, we are deceiving ourselves. And self-deception is a reality that manifests itself in a superficial faith. Self-deception comes in our lives into a form of superficial faith. Faith that we only have faith when things are okay. You know, there are people who can shout, 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 and praise God when things are okay. Can you still praise God when things are bad? You see, the test of our faith is not whether God has answered our prayer or God has given us what we want. Can we still be Christian when God does not answer our prayer or we do not get the things that we want? That's the test of our faith. Superficial faith, my brothers and my sisters, manifests itself when we are there. We, we, we are uh, 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 Christian when things are okay. When we are Christian in season, and when we are out of season, it becomes difficult to express our faith. 
we are to become doers of the word of God. Practicing the word of God when we are going through difficult time. What does the Bible say? When we go through difficult time, scripture is encourage us to continue to have faith. David understood this and say, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You know, how does the valley of shadow of death look like? It is a place of disappointment. Amen. It is a place of disappointment, a place of frustration, a place of many anxiety, a place of the unknown, the unplanned, where your plans are not going the way you wanted. It is a place of disappointment. But yet David says, I will still believe that mercy and goodness will follow me all the days of my life. This is why the Apostle Paul say, we walk by faith, not by sight. Because sometimes what we see with our eyes may contradict the reality of the word of God. But we still have to practice the word of God and believe God even in the small things. The Bible says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything make your request be known to God. The Bible gives us a command, do not worry. And how many of us worry? We worried about the church, we worried about the country, we worry about everything. You know, Christians worry and worry and worry. Scripture says, make your request known to God. Now, somebody will say, I've already prayed about it. Yes, continue to pray because Jesus said, ask and it shall be given unto you. Then Jesus moved from asking, he said, seek and you shall find. How do you seek? You engage yourself. And then it went from seeking to knocking. Come on, somebody. When you know somebody is in the house, do you just knock one time? And then you say, okay, I'm leaving. They are not answering. Come on. Is there anybody there? Somebody inside there. I'm here out there. You knock. Now, sometimes our prayers must become that knocking at heaven's door. Until God says, my grace is enough. If God has not yet said, my grace is enough, I will continue to knock at heaven's door. I will continue to ask. That's what scripture says. Don't get tired. Somebody said, we keep on repeating the same prayer request. Yes, if God has not yet answered, I am not going to stop asking. Amen. I will have a prayer on my lips and sometimes that prayer will be my song early in the morning i will wake up i praise god and i continue to present my request to god make your request be known to god before you begin to be anxious about something did you pray about it did you tell god about it talk to god about it that's what scripture says in times of trials and tribulation, my brothers and my sisters, we are to trust God. To trust God even in a place where it seems like we are losing. Because remember when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, before King Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar is giving them a challenge. I am going to throw you into the fire. And we will see if your God is able to come and deliver you from my hand. Oh, come on, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Look at King Nebuchadnezzar and say, your hands are too short to box against God. Where are you send us into the fire? Where the God deliver us from the fire? Even if God does not deliver us, we are not going to bow down before your idol god we will worship our god send us there even if we die it does not matter that's the kind of faith my brothers and my sisters when we become doers of the word of god we grow into our faith we deepen our faith we begin to integrate our faith and our actions in our everyday life and our relationship with god deepen we live out our faith in a practical way. Oh, we become mature Christian. And we know that all things will always work together for our good. You know, when you reach that place, you understand all things will work together for the good of those that love the Lord. 
You live with that sense of calm and peace in the midst of the fire or trouble and tribulation, you can still sleep. I still have my joy, regardless of whatever is taking place, whatever is coming to me, I still have joy. Be doers of the word of God, not just listener. So when we become doers of the word of God, we are not going to self-deceive ourselves. We are going to avoid self-deception when we become doers of the word of God because it will give us a strong faith, not that superficial faith, faith that believes God only when things are okay, but this is going to be a strong faith where we practice the word of God. God says I'll provide for you. God says I'll take care of you. Even though I don't know when my next provision will come from, yet I trust the Lord. Amen. I may not see it. I may not have it, but I believe God is able to do it. God is still a way maker. God is still able, specializing in doing what is impossible. Be doers of the word of God. My brothers and my sisters, this was an opportunity that was given to us. Like James is giving an opportunity to the believer and say, I know you may go through trial and tribulation, but understand, understand. You are to be strong in your faith. You are to believe. You are to practice your faith in your everyday life. You know, you are to engage your faith in every detail of your life. How you live your life is addressing moral and ethical conduct of the believers. How we act in public. Do you know, my brothers and my sisters, if Christians are going to be serious with what they believe, there are people who will never hear or read the Bible. But the way we live our life can become a living testimony for them when it comes to integrity. Our faith, my brothers and my sisters, must not be confined to Sunday worship only. We are not Christian on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock only. We are Christian every day, every day, every day. In our daily life, we are Christian. We are called to be more like Jesus Christ. We are called, my brothers and my sisters, to be more like Jesus Christ. When we become doers of the word of God, not only we, avoid, we are going to avoid self-deception, we are also going to avoid a new phenomenon that I call selective obedience. Amen. You know, selective obedience is something that is taking place in the life of the believers where people, you know, agree to follow a certain part of scripture and reject the other challenging part of scripture. You, you, you know, we create a false sense of righteousness because we just say, okay, this we agree and this we do not agree. When we become doers of the word of God, not only we will avoid self-deception that manifests itself in superficial faith or in selective obedience, it will also help us move away from judgment without self-reflection. You know how many times we can get caught up into uh, uh, so uh, judging other people that we fail to acknowledge our own shortcoming? You know, in the name of self-righteousness, we lack that self-awareness that it is only by grace. Even our ability to follow God does not come from our own. When we begin, my brothers and my sisters, to practice the word of God, when we become doers of the word of God, not only we select what we want and what we do not want, not only we put ourselves in that place like we take the place of God and, 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 and we, we begin to judge others, 
When we become doers of the word of God, we move away from that sense of saying we've just agreed with God, we agree with Christianity and the teaching of Jesus Christ in principle, but we will allow ourselves to be transformed by that word of God. How far the word of God has transformed you, yourself as a person, your relationship with God as a person. Many problems that we have with one another, I think, is the result that just say our relationship with God, our vertical relationship with God has been broken. Because if you love God and you have that vertical relationship with God, you are going to treat your fellow human being in a different way. Amen. Because you cannot, you cannot love God and refuse to love God's people. Embrace God's creation. You know, for a long time, as a preacher of the gospel, I've been preaching the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ for the past 25 years. Myself, as a Christian person, I gave my life to the Lord. I was 17 years old. I used to think our common denominator was a scripture. I used to think that the things that bind us together was scripture. But then I go and live among the Christians. You know, I'm 52 years old. And I started being a Christian when I was 17 years old. That's many years there. I've lived among the Christians. And I've just discovered even Christians don't agree on how to translate or interpret the Bible. Amen. You have one group that call themselves conservative, for instance. Even among the conservative themselves, they don't agree on how to translate or interpret the Bible. You go among the liberals, they don't agree on how to interpret the Bible. You go among the moderate, our understanding and interpretation of the Bible just differ. People have different perspective on how they understand the Bible. And now, if you are going to have the Bible as our common denominator, the things that bind us together, this is why perhaps we have all this division that we have amongst us. Then I went to the scripture to read the word of our Lord Jesus. I discovered that our common denominator is love. Amen. Is love. Because Christ says by your love, not by your biblical interpretation, not by your knowledge of scripture, but Christ says, by your love, they will know you that you are my disciples. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, the more I discover that, I went to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the chapter of love. The more I read that scripture, I feel, feel myself shot. I'm not yet there, guys. If you just read that scripture, Every day, you will go on your knees and say, Lord, I'm not ready. Love is patient. Come on, somebody. Amen. You know how many times you have shouted at the people who call your house? Love is patient. Love does not recall fault. Does not keep grudges. You know how many times we keep grudges? I used to think I've forgotten my teachers from the secondary school. I used to have a, creature, a, 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 a teacher in my first year, in my in first year, we call it secondary school here, high school here, and this guy belittled me. I, I, I thought I'd for, forgiven him. Until one day I saw him on Facebook. He was asking me from friends request on Facebook. He requested that we became friends on Facebook. That the day I discovered I had not yet forgiven him because I blocked him. I refused his friendship. And I blocked him because all the nerves came to me. I was so mad at him. To the extent one day when I went to the Congo, I was at the airport, I met another friend of mine, we were in class together. The question I was asking, is that teacher still around? Because I wanted to see him. Because he told me I would be nothing. I wanted to go and visit him. And my friend who happened to be a preacher, look at me and say, come on, shame on you. You still have that man, you got to forgive him. Love does not keep a record of fault. 
Love, my brothers and my sisters, does not disown others. Love covers a multitude of fault. Does not seek its own interest. Love, every time I read that scripture about love, I go on my knees, I say, Lord, forgive me. Help me to become the person that you want me to become. Our common denominator, our common ground is love. Let us be doers of the word of God. Let us not just hear the word of God. When we become doers of the word of God, we begin to participate, oh my brothers and my sisters, in what we call progressive sanctification. Because we allow the word of God to transform us. When we look at ourselves in the mirror of the word of God, we know who we are and we ask God to transform us. And the more we are transformed, the more we become like God, the more we change our perspective because we acquire divine perspective. We look at things from a divine perspective. I'm telling you, the moment you begin to look at the world from a divine perspective, you will change. But look what we do. We look at the world from our own biases, from our own preferences. We look at things from us, from me. And when it does not meet me, when it does not look like me, when it does not match my way of thinking, it is wrong. Oh, it is wrong. They are not right. Be doers of the word of God. When we allow the word of God to transform us, we deepen our relationship with God, our faith, we grow in our faith, we become mature Christian. We build a community of faith, a community that respect and encourage, promote the grace of God, Promote the love and the compassion of God. As we became, as we become that light, we provide, we influence the world. We become living testimony. Christ says, go and be my witness. Christ never said, go and be my advocate. We are not here to go and fight on behalf of God. God can fight God's battle, but we are called to be witness. Jesus send us, go, make disciples of all the nations. Go and be my, my witness. We become true witness when we allow this word of God to take place to transform us. And remember, we don't do it alone. Christ says, I will send you another comforter and helper the Holy Spirit. He will remind you about everything. He will teach you about everything and he's going to empower you so the Holy Spirit dwells in you and I so that we can become everything God wants us to become. May we in this journey invite the Holy Spirit to empower us so that we can do the word of God. May we have this prayer, Holy Spirit help me to become dual of the word of God, not hearer only. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let all of God's people say amen. amen. If you are able, would you please stand as we are singing our closing hymn, Trust and Obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey.
but we